jealousy and you have envy, you have so many different, it's just an episodic thing, you know, so you have so many different little movies that go on inside the industry that is just crazy, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, for that part, it's really not. Yo, I blame a lot of this on the label, dude. For real. And what role does the record label play in, in, in the breakup? Not specifically the people, but just as an entity. Out of 100%, I'd say 85%. Because me personally, I don't like to bad talk people behind their back or whatever on TV, whatever. But I really feel like the label really didn't care. Okay. You know what I'm saying? What we did. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we've always been our own a and R. We did everything our way. When we wanted to drop Check the Rhyme, that was our vision, right. our decision. Same thing with Award Tour, Electric Relaxation. This album, they were like, we don't hear a hit, this, that, the other. Um, then there was the Noriega record, you know what I'm saying? Um, let's drop that. And I felt like, you know, I love Noriega to death. That's my man. Right. Queens and all. But he had an album coming out like July 12th, something like that. Mm -hmm. Our album was coming out, well, the single was supposed to come out at the same time. And I feel like, yo, we've done, we already helped people in the past. Right. We gotta do this for ourselves now because with the disappointment that everybody saw with Beat Rhyme and Life, unfortunately, it's time to help ourselves now. We can't help nobody else. They was like, let's put out the Nori joint. And then they wanted to put out Like It Like That, but I'm not rhyming on Like It Like That. Right. So they were just picking a bunch of singles just to put it out there. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I don't, I don't think they were really trying to put their foot behind the project. And I mean, the day that Q-Tip and I did find a way, we already knew right then and there. That was a short shot for a second. Or either that or against the world. That's how we felt at the time. So I mean, at first it was the booty. Then it was against the world. Then it was find a way for a second. Then no. Then it was the Noriega record. Then it was like it like that. Ali and I just was like, I was like, yo, I'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying y'all are wrong for putting out um, like it like that because the people might really like that. But if we do, I'm not participating. I'm not coming to the video. Just call me when it's time to do shows. I'll be the MC. Whatever. I'm not dealing with all that other stuff. My manager hung up on me. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, yo, a whole big beef in that right there. I guess that was set tip off really. And then we had rehearsal later that night because we were about to go to Europe. He came in, we had a little discussion, and we all agreed, yo, let's just end this now because it's not looking good. As far as the support that we're supposed to be getting. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, and that comes from the management too. I don't care who's offended, what? Y'all know who y'all are. Well, the record labels don't really affect my appreciation of it because I understand the history of it. I'm lucky. I think um, if, you, if you know the history of the music, whatever the now goes on, you know saying, if it's in a bad place or it's in a good place, it really won't affect you much because you know where you came from. You know what I'm saying? So I could be disturbed, you know what I'm saying, as a black person at the plight, you know, at, at where we are right now as maybe young black men, but then understanding our history or whatever, I can kind of not, I can look in foresight and be positive because we've been through it adverse times and come above them and things of that nature so in relating that to music you know what I'm saying right. I'd be I'd be kind of like all right you know what I'm saying with how everything is ultimately what's wrong with record labels um today well it's not really today it's always been that that it's just money driven you know and money can be used as a good tool or a bad tool and sometimes when you're chasing the money, you're forgetting what it is that you were there for. Besides, you know, making the money, you're also trying to make records. And it, it, are you a type of company that you're just about making the money and you don't care about the type of records or you really care about the type of artist? And what I'm finding is that a lot of people talk of um, trying to establish long-term careers but when it comes down to just believing in the artists and spending the money, you know, regardless of um, how fast success comes for that artist, companies are not doing that. Wait, what you doing? 
Um, in case you didn't know what that meant. Um, he's always around, um, bouncing ideas off of him, and he's giving us the input. Um, and he's always been around, just not saying. Jerome really was that um, integral member of the first two years of Tribe on the first two albums because you know it was like he was like a musical director. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like if the the tracks were sounding like you know what I'm saying, he'd be like, nah, we should do it like this or, you know what I'm saying? The rhyme should sound like this or and um I I I, I deem that as part of production, you know what I'm saying? Right. So that was like an important piece. Ali a great producer? Totally. Okay. He made uh, brown sugar, uh, he did some joints for John B. Right. You know, Ali, Ali on the low is a very accomplished producer. You happy with this album? Yeah, I'm really happy with it. Are you think. happy with the album before this? I'm happy with all the albums. I think um, we're just expressing ourselves, man. And um, when you're doing something different, sometimes it's hard to accept, especially if people like what you've done in the past so much and um, you know, tend to grow. And unfortunately, um, with um, hip hop and R&B these days, it's kind of you know we stay in one place because we know what is comfortable. I mean, back. Like in the 70s, you had people listening to the Beatles, to um, Sly and Family Stone. You know what I mean? It was just, it was a very, music, my taste was just very broad. You know? I, uh, all right. This right now. Um, Did you learn to play that? You know how to play that? Uh, I just started like a couple of days ago, you know. So this is my future right here, trying to learn how to. You know, I, I'll be saying here so long. Trying to learn how to master this dad on thing, which is I was very much afraid of, but I'm no longer afraid of it. Okay. Those are four chords I just. Learned. I'm like nine songs deep already. Work. You know what I'm saying? Yo, my man JD from okay. Uma did like most of this, like seven joints so far. You know, me and this kid named Kareem did like two. Um, I want to work with, I want to see what Pete Rock has to offer. Primo. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming with the, not exactly thuggish, ruggish, but just some straight MC battling freestyle. Um, I got a couple of joints on there talking about relationships like love movement here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the girls need that. I got some joints dissing girls too. It ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? Take good with the bad. You have to. Um, I got some meditation joints like for the mind, skull. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to come at every angle, yo. The album's gonna be called Underdog due to my favorite cartoon character. Right now, I'm working on a, a movie writing a script, developing it. Um, I have some musical aspirations as well. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I have some business aspirations. I have a, I'm an aspiring young man <laughs> right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm extremely happy um, personally, which is okay. probably the most important. And then in terms of the opportunities that are presenting themselves to me in terms of my music and my art, my mm -hmm. career, I'm really happy about where it's going. I can't really speak on it right now because right. uh, I don't want to get certain people in trouble or whatever, but um, yeah, I'm happy. I right. look to hear from you soon. Uh, aside from music, that's my other passion is cooking. You know what I mean? I went to, that's what I went to school for. That's what I want to do in my life. You know what I mean? So. It was a way for me to get back in it, you know what I mean, while I still try to do my music thing. They were nice enough to let me, you know, do both, you know what I'm saying? Because there'd be times I'd be gone for like weeks, you know what I'm saying? They never complained or whatever because they knew. So are we going to see uh, 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 Jerobi the restaurant tour? Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Do you ever think that you all will record again together? As a Tribe Called Quest? Now that's a Tribe Called Quest. But 
those four individuals. Who you working for, man? <laughs> you somebody spy on the side? Nah, nah, I'm spy for zombie. the ch Nah, I was just joking. <laughs> oh, with the zombie the check on the underneath. Yeah, man, see if they we gonna get another wreck. <laughs> mm, no. Um, yeah, that's, I mean that's that's difficult. I think that's really difficult. That's, I mean, I said earlier, if Q-Tip of Five choose to do a record and get the phone call, yo, in the studio, then you know, come on through, then we all gonna be together now. You know, to make another record together and call it like Joe Blow and the Feathers, uh, we we can't we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no.